scribble bots, doodle bots, art robots, whatever you call them, this is a really fun and popular project because it's pretty easy to get something going and the outcome is exciting and surprising. There are tons of different ways to make this project, but I'm going to show you how to build this design, which I think is the best because the materials work really well and there are three variables that you can experiment with that allow you to meaningfully change the drawing patterns it creates. So first, let me show you how to build this. Then I'll go over the variables that you can adjust to change the drawing patterns. And finally, I'm gonna take a deeper dive into the individual materials that make this project work so well. So first you'll need a small electric motor and a single AA battery holder with a switch. I created a kit of supplies that have these plug and socket style connectors so that kids can do this part pretty easily but you can also just strip and twist the wires together. If you do this, just make sure to cover at least one of the exposed connections with some tape to avoid a short circuit. Next, get a one inch adhesive square, a 12 ounce plastic cup or similar, attach the motor somewhere near the top of the cup with the motor shaft hanging over the edge, and stick the battery holder to the side. Next, attach three washable felt tip markers to the bottom of the cup with at least two pieces of tape per marker. You can add more markers, but three is nice because it forms a tripod, which ensures that the tips of all three markers are going to be making contact with your paper. Next, you'll need to attach something to the motor shaft so that we can add an asymmetrical weight, which is going to make the whole thing vibrate. You can use these little plastic wheels or plastic gear, anything that fits snugly onto these two millimeter motor shafts. Now, if we turn this on, it spins, but it doesn't vibrate. To create an asymmetrical weight, I like to use these one inch foam cubes with another adhesive square stuck onto the motor. Just make sure that it's at least a little bit off center. That's what's gonna cause it to vibrate. So functionally, this is complete, but it is absolutely required that you add some googly eyes onto this. Okay, now it's complete. Let's test it out. For the drawing surface, I highly recommend using packing paper. It's really big and really cheap. Uncap the markers. And let's try them out. Okay, so that didn't really work and that's okay. In fact, it's a good thing. If this worked perfectly the first time, then it wouldn't be a great STEM activity. Being able to experiment, redesign, test, having it be challenging is what makes it awesome. So let's get into that now. The three things that you can experiment with are the position of this asymmetrical weight, the positioning of the motor and the battery holder, and the angle of all three markers. Let's start with this. The great thing about these adhesive squares is it makes it easy to take this off and move it. If we put this asymmetrical weight right in the center of the motor and try it out, it vibrates at a very high frequency. It doesn't bounce around and it creates these smooth lines. But if you move this farther away from the center of the motor and test it out, the motor is spinning slower, it has a lower frequency, but more of its energy is being used to bounce the robot up and down. Next, let's look at the position of the motor and the battery holder. These are the two heaviest parts of the robot and where they're positioned changes the center of gravity. For example, here you can see that there's too much weight on one side and the robot falls over. Rearranging these components to more evenly distribute the weight can help stabilize the robot. And by moving the motor, for example, from the top of the robot to the side, it changes the direction that the vibrational forces are occurring. And finally, the markers. The position of the markers affects the stability of the robot and the direction that it goes in. For example, if we angle all the markers slightly in one direction, now the robot spins in a circle. It's really fun to experiment and see how the patterns change. Okay, and finally, let's get into the materials. And I know maybe this isn't the most exciting part about this video, but the materials can really make or break this project. So check it out. First, definitely use plastic cups as your base. They're cheap, there's a ton of surface area to work with, and the best part is that with these adhesive squares, you can stick something onto here and then really easily take it off and stick it somewhere else without losing adhesion. By contrast, if you try this with a paper cup or something made of cardboard and you try to peel something like this off, it's gonna take some of the paper with it and you'll lose adhesion, which means you won't be able to redesign as many times. Okay, next and most crucially is the motor. Use the cheapest motors that you can find that have 
this metal housing with two flat sides. These ones tend to have the right amount of power. And speaking of power, all you need for this project is a single AA battery holder. So let me show you why these are important. Here's a different motor that's slightly larger and a two AA battery holder. You can see this is way too much power. It's heavier, so the ScribbleBot can fall over more easily and it's more expensive. In this case, less is more. For the asymmetrical weight, I love these foam cubes because if they fly off by accident and hit somebody, it's not really gonna hurt. And again, with these adhesive squares on a plastic surface, it's super easy to redesign where it goes on the motor so you can test out different frequencies. And finally, the markers. If you can, find these stubby markers that have a fat felt tip. Crayons and colored pencils don't work. You need too much pressure. Felt tip markers with a long plastic case do work, but they tend to be more unstable because the robot is higher off the ground. And don't use these thin felt tip markers. The tips will just break. And as far as the googly eyes go, bigger is definitely better. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.